Hello guys, welcome to another video here. Today we're going to be talking about a software tool on Linux which was really, uh, which was actually really handy to me and I would have wanted to have it back when I was actually troubleshooting my 1080 Ti when it did have like the issue with the thermal pads. Now I don't tell you about that part, at least I don't think I did, um, I might have, but the thing is now there's actually a solution. So. If you don't know, uh, the thermal pads on a GPU, they're, they're so that your actual VRAM chips and other parts of your components, but mainly the VRAM chips, because those are the ones that really get hot, uh, can be like monitored. So have you ever thought, if you're on Wayland, and on Linux in general, um, why can't I view my VRAM temps? Well, that day is over, my friends. I mean, it's over for a while now. I believe it was like two months. But like, if you haven't known, this is LACT. Now, LACT is like a GPU overclocking utility, um, mainly, but it also does a lot of other stuff. For example, it just shows you information on your actual GPU, which I can change. Actually, I can't because the other GPU is not assigned a, dri a driver to. At least it's assigned a VFIO driver, which doesn't make it appear to the Linux kernel. If you want to see that, we can run fast fetch, And as you can see here, we've got two GPUs, which of which the second one is my actual V. Um, a VM GPU. So yeah, here we go. I've got the GPU model. It says uh, 3090 uh, EVGA um, because that's the manufacturer of the board. We have the card model, which is still unknown. So it still has some room to improve if you guys know how to actually contribute it to this or like um, basically uh, differentiate the different like card mo model numbers. Go ahead and help the project. But that aside, let's go ahead and see. Uh, it just shows you the actual driver number here, the vBIOS version, the actual memory uh, thing, the uh, architecture, the CUDA cores, the ROP count, uh, the, GG, uh, the type of VRAM it's actually using, the uh, a level 2 cache, the uh, status of re resizable bar, which, by the way, if you want to run a macOS VM, make sure you disable if, if you're using a pass-through GPU. We've got CPU accessible VRAM, which is, yeah, it's dependent on the resizable bar. Of course, it's it's not that much. I mean, I personally would rather have macOS so I can edit my videos over like higher speeds of like loading stuff. So yeah, and we've got the link speed. So we can go to the actual OC tab. Now the OC tab is a lot more interesting and if you've used like software on Windows and are lacking the support of uh, software like that on Linux. For example, there was a good program called Green with Envy, but like Green with Envy had a fundamental issue, which was the fact that it didn't support Wayland. So when you were on Wayland, you couldn't do anything with how your GPU was configured. So with LAX actually, uh, and in the summer, where, where it's actually really hot where I live, so as you can see, we're running at like around 40. Now at, uh, at the winters, it's also really cold, so it's like not a mild co uh, climate here. Um, I really do need tools like this to not make my home like a space heater, especially with like an i9-1090 in a TXE and a 3090 in my system. But yeah, that said, we can go and actually explore this tab a lot in a lot more detail. So what we have here is actually the VRAM usage. So you can see the VRAM usage. Now I don't know why they have it there, but uh, that's <laughs> not the point of this actual video. We've got the clock, the average clock, the usage, the uh, voltage of the GPU, we've got power usage, uh, and we've got the hot earth temperatures, which is the actual most important part, which I wanted to have back when I had a 1080 Ti, and I wanted to diagnose if the VRAM was hot or actually wasn't hot, which I eventually did, um, because like I basically reapplied the uh, thermal pads and got scared of actually using it without like actually uh, reapplying the thermal pads, but here we go. We've got the GPU hotspot at 60, GPU at 50, we've got the VRAM at 52, basically, yeah, it's doing stuff. Uh, because there's 24 of these chips, um, yeah, it's, it's basically like reading a lot of readings. It can't just move that fast on a single chip, as far as I know. 
so yeah it's just moving around because there's multiple chips actually going up and down so uh, this is going to be the highest of all of the chips uh, available so we've got the GPU memory clock um, and we've got the throttling which of course it's not but if you like run a program which will come to a point here and I'll explain how why it thr throttles uh, yeah, uh, I'll tell you later. So we've got the uh, show historical charts, which you have here. Uh, as you can see, the clocks are jumping up and down. We've got the fan RPM, which is set to zero. It's in silent mode. We've got the actual limiter, the power cap, which we'll get to in a moment. And we've got the actual power uh, graph is, uh, here as well. We've got the temperatures, which has the peaks and basically uh, the current temperatures in this, this pretty little graph here. And we've got the power li limit, uh, which I limited to 350, which is the base uh, 3090. If you don't know the actual EVGA FTW3 or 4 the win 3 model is actually a 450 watt card, which basically puts it around like a base model of a 3090 Ti, which I don't want it to be, honestly. Like, it's, it's, it's already generating as much heat as it has to, and I was basically buying this GPU for its VRAM, which I didn't really need power, like, more... Uh, uh, power than a 1080 Ti and also like if you watch one of my videos actually installing the 3090 into my system you'll see that it has like a, an issue with um, actual clearance to actually draw in air and this is what actually makes it it viable to run a 3090 in my system so if I didn't have lacked um, my GPU might have already been dead now that is why this is really important to have so as you can see here, we've got the P-State, which basically makes your GPU turbo less, which I also did. This is for the summer. It actually uh, stays under control during the winters. And also now as well, it just goes to a higher RPM. And I just didn't want to hear the sound, so I just lowered the clocks until I actually um, stopped making the insane amounts of noise it already did and you can also do it to the vram which i haven't experimented with it also because like the vram doesn't actually go higher than a certain degree of actual um celsius we'll go to the thermal tabs which has like the automatic which is i believe the v one like the control the v bios actually has over your gpu fans which is um, yeah, it's defined through the VBIOS, that's, uh, uh, as much as I can say about it. And we've got the actual zero RPM from the fans, and uh, we've got the throttling here as well. You can put a cor curve, which is recommended. You can also put it static, which is, if we do, it's going to ramp up the flat fans, when I'm not going to do that, because I really don't want to do that. So yeah, here we go. And we've got the software. Now this tab is not really interesting, it's just like the um, previous one, but I'll go through this as it's like a whole exploration of the software called LACT, this video. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and see. So first of all, we've got some uh, facts about the uh, LACT uh, version and also the kernel version for some reason. Yeah, it's the system basically. So we've got the LACT da the daemon, um, which is the 0.8.0 release. And we've got the comet number there, and the same version is applied to the GUI. Now I don't know if you can have like different lag demons or uh, and GUIs coupled to each other, which I I don't think I recommend if if it's even possible. And we've got the kernel version, which is the six point fifteen point six. We've got the Vulcan um, information, which is the device name, which uses the thirty ninety by default API version, uh, and you can see the Vulcan version there. You can see the driver and the driver version. You can see the features, which we have to press show, and we've got multiple features here. And it also shows which features the GPU does not support, which might be like some 50 or 40 series features which are not available on 30 series you've got the extensions or maybe like amd exclusive slash intel exclusive features and we've got the other features here so and we've got opencl which i believe is a uh, big cooler thing um i got on the version of it the gpu it runs on we've got the driver version the opencl c 1.2 uh, which is the OpenCLC version, and we've got the work group size, which is 1024, um, whatever that is, and global memory, which is 24.8, that's the VRAM, and also local memory, which 
yeah, if you know, tell me in the comments down below. So yeah, that's basically lacked. Now, the main thing you have to worry about here and basically check is these two pages. The other two don't really matter. Um, and yeah, that basically wraps up this video. Now, do you like videos like this? Please tell me in the comments down below if you do, if you like these um, software guides or software explorations, if you may. Um, I will do more of them because it's kind of interesting uh, to actually explore software, go into the depths of it, and yeah. Uh, if you like the video, please like it, and if you want to support the channel, please subscribe. And yeah, that's ba basically me. Check out my other videos, which are in the description. And yeah, I'm out. Bye!